Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Glory to your name, God. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, I bless your name. I lift you up, oh, Father God. Lord, I bless your name, oh, God, because you you agreed to do it. You agreed to die for my, for my life, oh, Father God. You died for me, oh, Father God, so that the blood that you shed, oh, Father God, would save me time and time again. You only died once. It was one sacrifice that was made, oh, Father God, to save me. So, Lord, I bless your name, and I praise you, oh, God, for you are worthy. I bless your name, and I praise you because you thought of me on that cross. You thought about this testimony on that cross, oh, Father God. I bless you oh jesus you are worthy to be praised hallelujah oh god let everybody who hears this testimony oh father god let them hear it with open ears open hearts open minds oh god i pray that you touch those who need you at this moment oh father god thank you oh jesus for this moment thank you oh jesus for this testimony oh father god you reign lord you are sovereign lord you are good lord you are awesome lord you are faithful oh father god thank you jesus thank you jesus because you are awesome you are mighty you are excellent lord i praise you it is only you who i praise oh father god God, this prayer, oh Father God, is to you, Jesus, for you are worthy. I pray all of this in the matchless, incomparable name, the name that is above every name. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. I pray, amen and amen. Hi, everybody. I am so happy to see you guys in her neck of the woods. We are here on January the 2nd. It is January the 2nd, you guys. It is January the 2nd. And it is officially one month since the Lord called me out of darkness. He had called me out into his wonderful light. And I just give God praise. I thank God that I have this opportunity. I thank you, God, for the resources and the time and the the calling, the desire that I have to share this testimony with you guys. Um, I hope you guys are ready for this wild ride. It was it, it, it was a wild ride to experience. It was a wild ride for me to go through. And I just give God praise that I am standing here because the Lord made a way for me. He is so good. He is so faithful. He is so excellent. And I would be remiss if I kept this testimony to myself so um i just i'm so thankful that you guys are here in the neck of the woods to hear my story and um let's get right into it god be praised i thank you jesus you are awesome so uh today well a month ago today it was a wednesday it was december 2nd and i was you know living life per usual and i was on instagram when i saw that Someone who I followed, her name is Moshudat. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping I'm pronouncing it properly. Uh, but I follow Moshudat. She, if you don't know, she is a, an artist. She's a creative director. She's a super talented woman. And um, she had recently deleted her entire Instagram account. Well, not the account itself, but all of the content on it she deleted. She had um, let us know that she was giving it all up for God, how the Lord had delivered her the Lord had changed her life and the Lord had commanded her and she were she felt inclined she was called to let go of the past and turn return away repent she repented from her past um and I had known about her testimony before and as a believer I love me a good testimony so when I saw that she was going on live again I was like oh let me just join her live because I would love to hear another testimony why not so she had gone into detail about the battles that she had faced over the year 2020. And um, she had mentioned the spiritual battles that she had went through throughout 2020. And I think it's a beautiful thing when you can be on the other side of the battle to declare that the Lord Jesus Christ has delivered you and saved you and brought you out. I think it's a beautiful thing. So. Of course, I was totally interested in hearing her testimony. So um, as she continued to explain further about the battles that she faced during 2020, she mentioned that she had gone into spiritual warfare with marine spirits. And I had never heard of marine spirits prior. I mean, I knew, I know about 
the spiritual realm and I, and I know that there is the kingdom of heaven there's king the kingdom of the lord the heavenly realm and there's also the kingdom of darkness i'm familiar with that uh but as far as getting into detail about what marine spirits were and the things of the sort i didn't quite i wasn't familiar at all and she didn't go into much detail about them either but she did mention the battle that she went through so i did my homework because Google is free, and um, I firmly believe that if I'm going to be a believer of Jesus Christ, and if I'm going to represent Jesus Christ, then it is imperative that I do my homework in learning about the other kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. Because if we're going to be fighting against the enemy, I would be stupid for me to go into battle not knowing what I'm up against. So when she mentioned the marine spirits... <laughs> I did my homework and I was reading on um, how they manifest, where they come from, things of the sort. And when I did my homework, I learned that marine spirits are powers, they are spirits, de demonic forces, demonic powers that get their power from the water. So uh, when I learned about, when I learned that they were marine spirits, and basically marine spirits are spirits of the water, I continued to do some more research. And uh, as I was doing my research, a lot of things started ringing off in my head. Like a lot of things about how they manifest, the things that they do started sounding really familiar. So I'm just gonna pause right there and tell you guys about my 2020. Uh, so 2020 for me, of course, and for all of us was a year that was totally tumultuous, totally unexpected, and it was supposed to be our year. And once we went into quarantine, I had gone through so much personally with my family, personally within my own self, to the point where I had become like, I was totally abusing a whole bunch of substances, alcohol and weed specifically. I was totally abusing these substances to the point where I had a breaking point and I was just like nah like I need I'm ODing I need to cleanse I need to I need to get back right with the Lord so I went on a fast during the quarantine and after that after after the fast and once doors started opening opening after you know the quarantine was finished I started facing different kind of spiritual battles in my dreams I was having a lot of spiritual battles in my dreams um there were things and creatures appearing in my dreams that was very alarming but I serve the living God and when I wake up from those dreams I immediately give it to the Lord I immediately pray and I go on my way and the Lord was just letting me know and pointing out to me people in this realm who were not on my side people who were out for my downfall and I praise God for you know his revelation because the Lord is always revealing things he's always speaking to you you just have to be you know aware and listening tying it back to December 2nd when I had learned about marine spirits I had a whole season this year point blank point blank period I had a whole season and it was something that in my mind it was what I wanted to do I was cooped up in the house there was a whole bunch of energy stuck inside and I was like you know what I'm gonna have a whole season and it is what it is so when i had done my fast forward back to december 2nd 2020 when i was doing my research on marine spirits a lot of what i was reading about how they manifest started making a lot of sense um one thing in in specific that stood out to me in my research was that marine spirits they mute you as far as um when it comes to like worshiping God, they mute you. And I want to say that from like summer into fall, very well past my birthday, I hadn't been to church in a while. I hadn't been to church. I hadn't even been to virtual church. And praying and worship and all of the, those things wasn't really a part of my lifestyle during that time. And I always chalked it up to I'm tired or I chalked it up to a whole bunch of different things. So once I read that marine spirits, they, they shut your mouth because... When you worship God, when you praise God, you are lowering yourself. It becomes less about you and you are praising the Almighty. So if you are spending time praising the Almighty, of course you don't have time to praise yourself. So once I had read that, I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And then I, in my research, I read that marine spirits, they manifest sexually. So they are the sexual spirits, the spirits that make you want to have sex, makes you make you want to show your body off make you want the attention of men and make you want gifts from men in exchange for different types of things so all of that city girl stuff anyways um 
so yeah so it was that wednesday december 2nd when i was like this is sounding really familiar but i was still low-key in denial because i'm like i am not gonna start bugging out off of a testimony that i saw in the middle of the day of the day or whatever so i did think of i did consider that okay maybe i'm going through maybe <laughs> Maybe I might need to like pray, <laughs> but I was still kind of in denial. And so later on that evening, I had a talk with a really good friend of mine. Pause. So I forgot one major component. So during the summertime, during my whole season, uh, I had a specific dream where two men appeared to be dead in the dream and also mermaids appeared to me in the dream. They were about six, seven, eight mermaids that appeared to me in the dream. And I was underwater in this dream. Um, totally, the way I am in air is the way that I was under the water. Of course, this is super alarming. When I woke up, I was like, what? What, what did I see? Of course, it, was, it wasn't even like it was a, to me, it wasn't like a nightmare. It was just a very, very, it was a very vibrant and alarming dream because it was just so weird for me to have dreamt something like this. So in the dream, when I, I saw that the, the, there were two men with their heads, um, their, their faces were covered, and then the mermaids appeared, they, they showed themselves to me and they were making the ugliest shrieking sound. And then I, I jumped on the back of a turtle, this is a dream so I guess weird things like these are allowed to happen i jumped on the back of a turtle and i was holding on for dear life mind you and we were just going somewhere going going nowhere fast honestly i was holding on to this turtle for dear life holding on going nowhere fast and um while i was holding on to this turtle i looked to my left and praise the lord god is so good oh god I look to my left in the dream while I'm holding on to this turtle going God knows where under the sea. Um, I look to my left and I see the hip. I see the hip and the tail of a shiny white, bright white horse. It was the shine. It was the brightest horse that I've ever seen. The color was bright. The whiteness of it was bright. The shininess of it was bright. And both I saw it and the turtle saw it. Mind you, I'm holding on and the turtle is taking me wherever it's taking me. And we both look to our left and see it. And bo both of us, our eyes widen in marvel because we're just like, look at this sight. It's a dry horse under the sea. And because both I and the turtle had looked to the left, wherever the turtle was going, he bumped into something and I was knocked off and then I woke up. So I, that was during, that was a dream that I had during my whole season, but I had chalked it up to like, this is a crazy ass dream. Like I already, I'm already familiar with having like dreams. So I wasn't, I wasn't scared about having the dream. I was just very alarmed about like what that dream could be about. And you know, Google is free. So I had looked up the dream and seeing mermaids in your dream is not a good sign. Um, so I, of course, I offered the dream up to the Lord. I gave it to him. I was like, Lord, it's all yours. Do what you got to do with it. So fast forward back to December 2nd and I'm having this conversation with my friend. I tell my friend about the dream and I'm just like, yo, these marine spirits, they are, they, they're, they're sexual spirits and they act like this and they look like this. They look like mermaids. So I'm having this conversation with my friend and I'm really like overwhelmed a little bit because I'm just like, the math keeps mathing. But this is this is a lot right now. Like this is a lot for, to be happening. So that evening, that was a Wednesday evening. I'm just like in bed, really just overwhelmed with the just the idea that I could be going through potentially like some sort some sort of spiritual situation. So that evening, I'm just like God. Hold. I even pray. I, I mind you at this time. I'm still. I'm still muted. I, I, I want to say I'm still muted as far as when it comes to praying. So I'm just kind of like, God, hold it down because I don't know what's going on and this is a bit too much for me. God, hold it down. And um, over the course of between that Wednesday and that Friday, the Lord had just, he literally held it down for me. Um, there was a moment where I had gone to my mother, of course. <laughs> I'm going to go to, you know, my mom because she's older than me. She's wiser than me. And she had laid hands on me. She had laid hands on me and she placed holy oil over, like, my body. And she placed it specifically on my belly. And my belly started cramping. And I was like, what the hell is going on here? 
I was like, what is going on? And, um, and I remember after she had laid hands on me, I had fell asleep. I had fell into like a really short sleep. But when it was time to wake up from that nap, I could not get up. I literally was faced with sleep paralysis. And this wasn't my first time having sleep paralysis. The only other times I've had sleep paralysis, I want to say, is when I was in Haiti. And, um, yeah. I think I've had it a few other times, but the first time was in Haiti. And the only thing that can break me out of sleep paralysis is saying in Jesus' name. So there I was with sleep paralysis, but here was what here is what was most alarming about this sleep paralysis. So I'm trying to wake up from this nap. I can't get up, I can't gain control of my body. And in the in my ear is the sound of pots and pans banging in my ear, just like banging like like the no it was just noise in my ear and i'm just like what the hell like as soon as i as soon after my mother lays hands on me and this is what i'm experiencing i'm like oh nah so i'm so i'm asking my mom like you know mom are you in the kitchen doing something and she was like no i'm in the bathroom running water and i'm like i'm like water spirits running water sleep paralysis what the hell so i start going and in, interceding on my behalf on my own behalf and i praise god that um i praise god for my church my church family i praise god for my spiritual maturity uh because i know how to intercede on my own behalf so i start opening my mouth i refuse i refuse to let the enemy have control i refuse to have these spirits have control over my mouth so i made all my body with the sleep paralysis so i start interceding for myself i start praying i start i start um singing because they don't want you to praise god so immediately i started lifting up the name of the lord i started lifting him up magnifying him i was going in with it and that was the morning after that was basically the thursday and then throughout the day i'm interceding on my own behalf and then the same friend who i had shared my dream and all this other stuff with previously she she hits me up that same day and she's like yo i had a dream about you and it concerned like you in the sea so i'm like oh my god like what is going on i'm like okay tell me the dream she tells me the dream and in the dream I'm driving, I'm driving on the road, and then I just drive into the sea with my friend in it. And my friend is like, is this like a submarine? And I'm like, nah, it's not a submarine. And she was like, let's get back on the road. And I was like, all right. And we get back on the road. And I just, I just thank God that we got back on that road. And then that same, that same moment, that same moment when my friend tells me that she had a dream about me and we were on the sea and we got back on the road, the last man who I had dealt with at the, at the moment, yeah, I think, yeah, the last man I had dealt with, he hits me up. He's like, yo, I had a dream about you. And I'm like, what did you have a dream about? Mind you, I'm still kind of like freaked out and I'm almost a fake. I'm like fake, still in denial. And he's like, I had a dream. And in the dream, you were asking me why, we, why I was being stingy with the dick. <laughs> and I'm like... Mind you, these marine spirits are sexual spirits. So now I'm like, okay, so this friend of mine who I'm connected to through the body of Christ and then here's this other person who I'm connected to through God knows what, they're both having a dream about me. And I'm just like, yo, something is happening in the spirit realm. Something is really happening in the spirit realm. So I start going in again. Mind you, this is all on Thursday. I'm, I'm interceding. I'm praying. I am casting out demons. I have never in my life casted out demons out of myself. But here I am literally casting out demons in the name of Jesus. Casting out marine spirits in the name of Jesus. And as I'm casting it, as I'm casting it out, my body is getting hot. My body is getting cold. My hands start twitching. My eyes start twitching. I'm getting headaches. My back start hurting. I'm like, yo. Some, like, literally... The Spirit of God and whatever other spirits, they, it was a fight happening. But God is great. God is good. God is awesome. God is worthy. And he will, he will snatch you out. So now, it's the next day. It's Friday morning. I have another dream. And now, in this dream, someone who I know to have, to have already transitioned, someone who I know to be deceased, she appears in the dream. And that's not a good sign. I don't care who appears in your dream. Whenever someone who is deceased appears in your dream, whoever it is, to me, in my knowledge, in my own experience with the Lord, 
it's not a good sign for people who have to, to have transitioned to appear in the dream, but here she was in the dream. And then, um, in the dream, there's, there's a white man in the dream, and he gives me some money asking for it in exchange for sex. And I take the money in the dream. And as soon as I take the money in the dream, I realize, in the dream, I'm like, I said in the dream, you're a clever spirit. And this fight is going to be harder than I thought. I wake up the next morning. I'm bugging out in the name of Jesus. I am casting out spirits. I am hollering in the name of God. I'm lying face down on my face. Because I refuse. I refuse even in my consciousness. I refuse to be bamboozled or deceived by the enemy. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. So I'm just thankful to God that even in my dreams, even in my consciousness, the Lord gives me insight. The Lord gives me knowledge to look in the face of the enemy and know, and tell him I know who you are. And I just praise God for that. So now thank you, God. I praise God for the body of Christ. I thank you, God. I thank God for my resources. I have a minister in my life who is very um, knowledgeable in spiritual warfare. And I tell him everything. I tell him about my whole phase. I tell him about the dreams that I was having. I tell him about everything. And he's like, listen, you are going through what you're going through. Like you are, you are battling marine spirits. And what he mentioned to me was that marine spirits are the most powerful in the kingdom of darkness. But God be praised, God be praised, God be praised. I belong to the Christ. You can be tormented by spirits and still belong to the Christ. But Christ, when he says that he has you, he has you. When you say yes to God, when you say yes to Christ, when you declare Christ, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, as your master, as your redeemer, he is going to deliver you. He has, he will deliver you. And I just give God praise because throughout those three days, that Wednesday, that Thursday, and that Friday, the things that I had experience in the physical because of the supernatural man it is only God it is only God it's only God who saved me and marine spirits it's it's a it's a wild phenomenon to think about the spiritual realm but I completely am aware that the spiritual realm exists I completely am aware of the power they possess but Glory be to God, that my God is the King of Kings, and He is the Lord of Lords. And when I tell you all power and dominion is in His hands, when He calls Himself the Almighty God, it is because He is the Almighty. When God be for you, nobody, no spirit, no demonic energy, no nothing can be against you. And I experienced it firsthand, and I give God the glory, the honor, the praise. And the thing is about marine spirits, it's like, you can, you will have, when you serve God, when God is within you, when God abides in you and you abide in the Lord, when Jesus Christ is your savior, you will have the victory every time. At the name of, when the, when the word says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, and the enemies must flee, the enemies must flee flee no one can stand in the presence of the almighty god and remain they must flee i just give god praise because i feel like there's many things that the lord has revealed to me during 2020 and december 2020 was the t there was the icing on the cake the lord was like you are not going into 2021 with what you're dealing with right here and what I love about God the most is like while I was interceding, even in the storm, because the Lord was revealing to me in his word just how, how much power he has over the waters. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers he knows the earth is the lord so he knows everything he knows everything that is happening uh, on the earth above the earth in the heavens under the, he knows it all and i just give god praise that when i tell you he delivered me so while i was going through the storm the brink the, the the thickness of the battle the spiritual battle that i'm still going through like it's the way when 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 the minister mentioned to me that these marine spirits are not they're the strongest like he was not lying like you can be delivered from one and still have so like still have so much to keep battling and i just give god praise because i have the victory every single time i just give god praise for that um but like i was saying what i love about god and his power and his 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 loving kindness is that 
when you go to the Lord in repentance, when you repent, and, when, and to repent, it just means to turn away. If you are going one way, you, when you turn away from it, that is what it is to repent. So when I turned away from my from my disobedience, from my mutedness, from my whole season, when I turned away from the denial, when I turned away from all that I was going through. When you're in repentance, when you're worshiping, worship is such a vulnerable experience for the worshiper. The presence of the Lord exposes you, it reveals things about you, it, it reveals to you what you have done that is just not pleasing to God but it's not like a oh this is what you did this is what you did this is what you did that's Satan's job Satan he is the accuser so he is gonna be like that's what she did that's why she would buy that's why she's not worthy of your love but thank God for Jesus because Jesus is like listen I died for you all that you did it's it's okay just confess all you need to do is confess with your mouth just confess your sins and you will be set free the Lord forgets all of it so when I was in worship just confessing my sins and apologizing for just everything the Lord was just revealing to me where it all started and I think it's important that I mention where it all started, where I think the root of it came from, because this, I hope this testimony is a wake up call to somebody watching this. So here I am in worship and I'm just like, Lord, I'm sorry. And the things that I'm apologizing for, I'm just kind of like, I'm, I'm sorry for like all the time spent away and I'm sorry for not, for not um, being obedient to those little voices that told me, oh, you should pray or maybe you should fast or maybe you should go to church. And I was just apologetic for that because it's just like, if I had just been in your presence, the thing is, the thing is, even in repentance, you're not, you're not, um, like you are sorry, but you don't, it's not that the Lord doesn't make you feel bad for it. It's just like being in the presence of the Lord makes you want to apologize. You're just like, daddy i'm sorry like i'm just really sorry and in that in that worship in that repentance the lord was like remember that one time a few times several times and what i'm referring to leads on to my next point um the dangers of manifestation 